Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 30, and today's node is the labs region from ImageSarp. So this is a sub-level geometry node, so we can dive inside here and just use a region from image. Labs region from image. So over here, you'll see that we have an input. We can either use an image or a cop network. Cop network is just going to be the Houdini compositing context. So if you create an image in there, you can bring it in to use over here. So I have this image that I just created in Photoshop. I just threw a bunch of colors together, a bunch of different shapes to show you how this works. All we're going to do is we're going to call this in using this regions from image node. So I just chose shapes.png and you'll see that it generates this grid for us. On this grid is the image that we had. Now, over here, it'll generate some regions for us. Each one of these regions corresponds to the different colors within this image. You can see over here that we can choose how many colors it should take a look at. And then we also have some other options over here. I found that the default options for this work pretty well, so we're not going to focus on these too much. But what we do have are these two options over here. These are going to be our most useful options. We have this add index attribute. And if we middle mouse, you'll see that we now have a prim attribute for the index. If we go ahead and just use a blast node, then what we can do is we can just say add index, make it equal to zero. So in this situation, it's going to blast away the background. So as you can see, as we change this index, it blasts away a different thing, right? So if we say delete non-selected, you can see that we can select each one of our shapes individually. Additionally, you could do the same thing with a for each named primitive, plug this in over here, and then the name over here would just be index. If we go over here, you can see that we can go through single passes and we gain access to each one of those shapes that this has generated. Additionally, we also have a custom attribute. So over here, we have an attribute name and we can give it whatever name we want. For example, we can call this shape. And then inside of here, I can just give each one of these an attribute value. So for the red square, we'll just call this square. For the green rectangle, we'll call it rectangle. The blue circle will be circle. Magenta triangle, we'll make triangle. And then we have this turquoise cutout, and we can call this circle cutout. Now, if we take a look at our geometry spreadsheet, it'll add this attribute over here called shape. And all of the primitives that we've assigned an attribute value to will show up over here. So now instead of using an index, we can use our custom attribute that we called at shape. And we can just check for a square, a circle, a triangle, and so on. Now, what we can do is we can also take these shapes and we can work with them individually. So if we just blast away the background, then inside of here, we can run a bunch of operations. So as you can see, just like that, we can grab an image. We can feed it in to our regions from image. We can get an index or a custom attribute, which can be of string, float, or integer data types. And then we can run a bunch of operations on whatever's coming in. And you can get much more creative with this. For example, you could paint out a terrain and then bring it in where you have perhaps blue being water, green being trees, brown being mountains. And then you could actually use that to generate different regions for an actual terrain inside of Houdini. So that's just an idea, but the main concept behind this is to just pull in an image, define some regions, and then use those regions. So that's all for this part. I'll be seeing you tomorrow with the final Mardini node, and that's going to be the lab's edge smooth slot. So I'll see you tomorrow.